Now let's start looking at this header tag business. The first thing that I want to do is I want to set a width for my header. Now, unlike divs, where you know if I say 900, or if let's say I say 800, actually we'll stick to a 960 pixel width, even though this video is a different frame size, and then I say margin zero auto. If you look at this and you're an experienced XHTML1 CSS2 web designer, you know that this means that this is center aligned and that there's a width of 960 pixels. To help prove this theory, I'm going to make my background red. Now, if everything goes well, we should see a red background, but we're not seeing anything. No reason to get scared. By default, these new tags like header, section, article, nav are not display block. And what that means is that they are inline. So unless you, in, and what I mean by inline and block is that, you know, if I look at the H1 here and then the H2, these are block level elements. So the browser knows that one has to appear under the other. And it doesn't make the assumption that, uh, you know, tagline here is going to appear next to Acme Website Inc. So block level elements have backgrounds and margins, but inline elements don't. Now, if I refresh this again, you'll see that I have my red background and it's actually centered. We can see that because there's a bit of a border on the side. And that's about it. So now we can start building out this page as normal. So I have a header section and then I have a nav section. just going to create some navigation here since most websites have navigation and also you can think that you know a screen reader when it comes and it looks at this page it's not going to have a very hard time figuring out what's your navigation what's your header what's more important than what you know h2 is obviously more important than h3 there's a list of navigation inside here so it becomes a self-describing document which is really the the goal of XML so I'll say that this is product A, product B, and that there's some services. Contact us. There we go. So these guys are hugging the left side. If I want to make my nav display block, just have to add it here with a comma. And there we go. So now they're part of this. Now I want my navigation to be to appear like a top bar like you saw in the last video. And to do that, I'm just going to add some additional declarations. First of all, I'm going to uh, start by making the background some kind of gray. And we're going to add some gradients down the line, but for starters, let's just get it looking normal using regular old CSS2. Refresh this again. So now we have a, a bar running across the side there. And now I just say nav ul. You'll notice that we're no longer using the dot syntax or the pound syntax. Because the tag is actually called nav, we don't have to do that anymore. And I'll just say list style is none. That'll get rid of these guys on the left side. And then nav ulli. We're going to float them left. We know that they're block level elements because they're appearing underneath each other. And now they're going to appear along the side. And we'll add a bit of a margin on the sides. So I'll say 0 pixel top and bottom and 24 pixel left and right. So now there's a little more space. Now we'll go further into the DOM, you'll see that I'm just going further and further up the chain. So there is the nav tag, style that one way, then the unordered list inside the nav tag, then the list items in the nav tag, and then the actual hyperlink. And in another video what we're going to do is some advanced CSS selectors. We're even going to create a table with very little HTML code 
and just using CSS and the advanced selectors that are offered in these newer browsers like Chrome and Safari and the latest version of Firefox. Now, if you're trying to do this with Internet Explorer and you have a, you know, a strong Internet Explorer audience, then HTML5 is probably not the best thing for, for you know, a site that where you're targeting H, you know, Internet Explorer users. Uh, however, you know, you can have a website that kind of degrades gracefully with HTML5. A lot of what you're doing and a lot of what you're writing is very similar to the stuff that you're probably already writing now. And so you can add some of these features slowly without having to adopt HTML5 completely and do it sort of transitionally. So I'm going to set a font size of 15 pixels, maybe make them a dark gray, get rid of those under underlines. I want my hyperlinks inside my nav to be display block, and in doing so, it becomes possible for me to not only set a padding, but also set a height, as well as borders, which we're going to see in a minute. So now already it's starting to look more like navigation. I'm going to say border width. Whoops. We'll add a border on the left and the right. And a style, we're going to make it solid. And we're going to make the border color. Let's make it, I don't know, like a dark gray. Uh, make, maybe make it white so we can see it. Okay, 